I know this topic has been covered ad nauseum on the internet, but there are a few things I'd like to add to the conversation of the not like other girls slash guys attitude and content that very sad and lonely people post. We'll look at some examples that various subs on Reddit have helpfully compiled and then get into why this mentality is so prevalent, where it started, and how people of all genders use their preferences and dress and ideology to define their whole personality around just how masculine or feminine or something in between they are. I'm prefacing this video in an attempt to avoid sounding completely sexist, considering my own heteronormativity, and because a lot of the critiques and video essays others have made tend to focus solely on not like other girls content, which is kind of problematic in itself without looking at how this trend isn't exclusive to women or female passing persons. For starters, if you're not familiar with the meme turned trope, not like other girls archetypes were initially what you might call non-traditionally feminine girls posting memes that highlighted the difference between themselves, the video game loving, smart, modest, relatable burnet weirdos with the other girls, vapid, boy crazy, materialistic, basic, girly girls. Basically, it's a mentality where one woman judges more feminine women and how if they wear dresses or like the color pink or otherwise present as classically feminine, these weirdos consider them vapid and materialistic. These not like other girl girls <laughs> could never reconcile being a fan of Alicia Beth Moore, aka pink, because she had a man's haircut and wore pants, I guess. <laughs> As the trope evolved, the more traditionally feminine archetypes who wore some dresses and enjoyed baking co-opted the movement and started putting down women car mechanics and farm hands because they rejected their femininity. You could consider line wives a subsection of this mentality, which I have covered extensively. Basically, these people take a single defining characteristic about themselves and base their whole identity around that one thing. It's not only harmful towards the plethora of ways different people present, but is self-ostracizing. It's a downward spiral of ideology that lacks depth, and the more you dig your heels into the idea that how you present to the world is the one true and correct way, the more you alienate yourself from those around you. It's also just weird to look at a woman who wears Carhartt overalls or a tiara and think, wrong. <laughs> it's sexist, misogynistic, and weirdly conservative, despite how people who identify across the political spectrum are susceptible to participating in not like other girls' behavior. It's a reactionary, archaic way of thinking that's steeped in sexism, patriarchy, and internalized misogyny. I might not know about the experiences of women, but I do know there's a lot more nuance going on here about femininity as a performative act meant to attract the attention of men, R ridiculous standards women are pressured into living up to, all while being demonized for liking girly aesthetics, and how the internet collectively ridiculed women making these memes and how they came to the aid of other girls who white feminism consistently defends. At the end of the day, this whole trend just pits women against each other by creating a false dichotomy where there is a right and wrong way to present as a woman. Women and people in general are a multitude, not a monolith. And this all just feels like one group crying out for attention in a self-destructive way. A lot of this content, particularly on TikTok, is just a woman sitting in her car staring condescendingly into the camera with text explaining, sometimes cryptically, that she's not like other girls because she responds to texts, doesn't play games, and doesn't get around. Bragging about your sexual activity, whether it's having a high body count or that you don't get around, is so childish. It literally doesn't matter as long as both parties are consenting adults and acting responsibly and being proud of not being the town bicycle tells me you're either weirdly religious or just bad at sex. It comes across as how straight edge hardcore kids hold their sobriety over people's heads as if that makes them a better person. You're an asshole and not a good person if you do this. <laughs> it's the first quarter of the 21st century and we're still so puritanical and clearly dealing with repressed sexuality in this country. But then you'll see countless posts announcing how someone is pregnant, which I'm sorry, but every time I see one of these, all I can think is that you let your husband dump a big load inside of you. And somehow I'm the weirdo? Stop detailing the date and time and phase the moon was in when you got pregnant and then sharing it on Facebook. The whole thing is just hypocritical, that talking about sex is bad, but talking about what happens when you do it without protection it is somehow okay when it's so, so much worse. And then there's this lady who seems to think that glasses are what make a woman attractive. 
I don't know what any of this means and neither do any of the people in the comments. Did someone else put text over this video? I'm so confused. We've even got juggalos who are not like other girls because they don't listen to Taylor Swift. The ICP crossover here is wild, but not as wild as judging other women who own dogs, have depression, or a vitamin deficiency. Now, if you haven't noticed, there's sometimes an underlying religiosity to this type of content, as it has grown beyond the emo deviant art users that originated it. I'd like to present example 13694 to the court as evidence. <laughs> She's a bi lefty that posts jack shit about faith or family, and I'm a good girl that reads my Bible. <laughs> you gotta give it to the uber religious for just how many ways they come up with persecuting and oppressing people who aren't white or straight, and don't believe in a bearded, omnipotent entity who drives a cloud around in the sky like it's a Corvette. <laughs> There's no competition here. You're right. A competition implies that both sides are somehow at odds or playing the same game. I doubt the bi lefty gives a shit about how many times you've read the Bible and probably believes that as long as you're not hurting anyone or indoctrinating anyone, you can read whatever religious fairy tales you want free of judgment. These people want to be oppressed so badly that they come up with fictional scenarios that frame them as good and anyone else as evil by imagining there are bisexual leftists plotting against them from their Unabomber cabin in the Pacific Northwest. We don't care that you believe in Cloud Daddy. We care when you use the teachings of your Sky Father to make blanket generalizations based on a person's gender and sexuality. Now, I can't in good conscience not mention Pearl Davis, the queen of Not Like Other Girls. She's a self-proclaimed anti-feminist conservative Catholic who has been described as the female Andrew Tate, which should be all you need to know about her beliefs. Clearly brainwashed by alt-right propaganda and suffering from a metric fuckton of internalized misogyny, she stated that women shouldn't be able to vote and that divorce should be illegal. <laughs> You also, but you don't want, you want divorce to be made illegal. Yes. Why? Yes, because I don't think what we have today is really marriage. What is marriage? It's for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health till death do us part. That's what marriage is supposed to be. But feminists have ruined marriage for the people that actually believe in marriage. How? When there's a 50% divorce rate, and the average marriage is Why is that all down to years. the women, though? I, I, I didn't say that it was all down to the women. So why well, feminists what I, what I, you're, You asked why I want divorce to be banned. Yeah. Can I finish yeah. that first? So I'm saying, you know, the people that believe in divorce, go be in long-term relationships. Leave marriage for the people that actually believe in for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health till death do us part. But doesn't the sanctity of marriage also rely on the woman being a virgin? So you wouldn't be able to get married. I'm, what do you what do you mean? Well, you've spoken quite openly There's... about how you're not a virgin. And so if you want to preserve that sanctity of marriage, I then, think, you know, you know I, and I, wish, I just think that and... you're upholding standards that you don't I, actually I, live I, by. I, you know, and that's a fair... That's... Now, I'm no constitutional lawyer, but I'm pretty sure this would violate the 14th Amendment, considering it would essentially strip a person of their individual freedoms. Besides an old dusty piece of parchment, it also raises the philosophical question about individual autonomy and the role of the state in the lives of private citizens. Now, if she truly believed what she proselytizes, and by her own logic, why would anyone listen to her? Shouldn't she be out finding a husband to be submissive towards who she can't leave no matter how abusive they may end up being? Her building a content creator slash influencer empire is contradictory to her own teachings. I don't think she even sees or understands the paradox she's created, which means she either doesn't actually believe what she says or she's the world's biggest moron. There couldn't be a bigger endgame pick me boss than Pearl Davis, who has elevated the voices of other lowlife scumbags like Ben Shapiro, Andrew Tate, and Thomas Sowell, who compared black civil rights advocates to Joseph Goebbels. And most of the time, when she's not refusing to speak out of puerile stubbornness, she can't even produce facts or generate enough brain power to extrude a cogent thought out of her putrid, milksop, sepulchral maw. What way was slavery made to seem more horrible than it was? slavery oh. stuff too because what they do is they embellish and i'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible it was right but they want to make it like more horrible um we were talking about and i don't i don't really want to go into this too much because we're kind of past this but i was quoting a thomas sowell book like if feminists want the right to vote right 
then it should come with the draft. Where, where are the feminists fighting for equality in this situation? Feminists actually, they want the draft abolished. There should be mm -hmm. no draft. So men and women shouldn't be drafted. That is also equality, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. She's a barnacle who has latched herself mollusk-like onto the sinking Manosphere ship where the woman-hating crew bathe her in attention, but who wouldn't waste the effort to remove her suckling as they regard her less than the rats that infest the ship itself. For all her efforts to stand out and gain the favor of her gentleman peers, never would they court her despite her obvious misanthropic pleas to endear their affections. Her whole shtick is to insult the same people these brutish, pestiferous simpletons love to debase, whom she unquestionably idolizes, and it's just really pitiful. Where random TikTok users might judge another woman for her choice of dress, Pearl wants to put any and all women in bondage. She clearly has no empathy and most likely doesn't actually believe the oral droppings her mouth produces. She's a succubus who feeds on the negative energy the public can't turn away from. She's a walking car crash who even I can't refrain from spewing forth my own toxic hatred. I try to have an even hand when examining people like this, but she is truly a blight on humanity. And I would say, and have said, the same about men who propose the same backwards, archaic, oppressive shit. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> there's also a strange infantilizing manipulative angle when men and boys use this phrase when complimenting women. You're into the shins? Wow, I I've never met any girl who listens to them. Y you're so cool and not like other girls. <laughs> It puts women on a pedestal and turns them into a caricature of what a woman is. It's manipulative because it singles out the individual and despite how ham-fisted it is, basically tells the woman, I think you're unique and no one else, not even you, sees that except me so you should probably fuck me now because I'm also special and unique for seeing that part of you. It's the plot of She's All That. <laughs> it implies that the woman in question is too stupid to see that they're unique without needing a man or anyone to point it out and validate them. This type of manipulation is meant to diminish their maturity and intelligence, reducing them to a less complex being while positioning the man as more knowledgeable and wise, which sets up a power imbalance between the two. There's a bit of born sexy yesterday going on here as well. It also just further isolates the woman from her peers by suggesting that she's just like so quirky and different from them, which creates a sense of indebtedness to the man or person in the position of power. It's a tactic to garner favor she should reciprocate with affection. To be totally honest with you, there have been times where I have had these thoughts and feelings about women as a young man before I knew this is what was happening or had any concept of power dynamics, manipulation, or infantilization. Even if you don't have a grasp of these theories and tactics, society subliminally tells men this behavior is acceptable and ends up creating a nice guy mentality that sends men through the incel pipeline at light speed. <laughs> Men are also being manipulated to treat women this way, which isn't to say that's an excuse, but it is a failure on the part of our parents, teachers, and those in positions of influence within any given society. And men aren't excluded from participating in not like other girls' behavior either. It's just much more aggressive and usually manifests as really long and obnoxious possessive nice guy text messages. I'm the real deal looking for the real thing. I'm not here to waste your or my time. I want to meet legitimate people and start a fire. Somebody call the cops. This guy's an arsonist and he's looking for an accomplice. <laughs> I have a master's degree, work for myself, control my future. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> work for myself just sounds like he's an unemployed entrepreneur and the control my future line is both existential and metaphysically confusing because the future is technically something that never comes which you inherently can't control. This guy could get hit by a car meet Joe Black style just crossing the street. Unless his control over the future was that he wanted to be a crash test dummy and get hit by a bus then you know Checkmate. <laughs> Guys always say convoluted, misguided shit they themselves don't understand in order to sound smarter. A symptom of the social desirability bias where someone portrays themselves in a way that is viewed favorably by others regardless of the truthfulness of those portrayals. I don't want to linger on this too long for fear of getting way off topic, but saying you control your own future suggests that this dude has complete godlike agency over his actions and is the primary architect of his own future, uninfluenced by external forces. 
a, a speeding bus that blew through a stoplight and turned his face into concrete chutney. <laughs> the assertion of control over one's future confronts the philosophical debate about the illusion of control. The tendency to overestimate one's abilities to control events and outcomes, which is itself a form of conditioning a lot of men suffer from that is directly tied to the outdated idea of masculinity. That men are the breadwinners and stoic, irrational, calculating beings who should be emotionless, locomoting mannequins with big penises. Which is just, I guess, a sentient male sex doll? <laughs> oh, good, more sex stuff and pedestals. Uh, not that you shouldn't try to satisfy your partner. <laughs> Listen. I'm by no means prudish, but please don't make me visualize your sex acts at nine in the morning while I'm just trying to have some coffee and read the news. Anyone who says they're good at sex is usually not good at sex or thinks normal people sex is the same as what they've seen in porn. It always comes across as overcompensating, like guys who own one ton trucks who need a ladder to get into or when politicians push for anti-LGBTQ policies only for it to come out weeks later that they were propositioning coworkers or had been carrying on secret gay relationships the whole time. And then there's guys who think the most basic mundane activities are a sign that you found your soulmate. Whoa, she likes food too? Well, we're perfect for each other. I didn't know women ate Food? I thought they photosynthesized. If anything, this kind of proves that men aren't stoic, rational beings, but just fucking idiots. <laughs> I am curious what he thinks being a weirdo is, though. He's definitely weird for recording this and putting it on the internet. But usually, when men like this think a woman is weird, they're referring to her having a sense of humor or an opinion or wearing makeup that doesn't border on racist minstrel performer. Ew. How quirky. <laughs> I am absolutely convinced guys like this have never encountered a woman before. They can't help but tell on themselves by accidentally admitting they know absolutely nothing about women and framing it as a flex. Dude, women don't poop, which means they don't eat food, duh. I'm good at sex, by the way. <laughs> this guy says that dating is confusing, but then lists things that people definitely do on dates, so what's he confused about? Even the things he is clearly not a fan of, getting drunk and vaping. <laughs> At least one of those things is an acceptable activity to do on a date under the right circumstances. As someone who's sober, I would be fine with going on a date where the other person drinks because I'm not a huge judgmental asshole, but if they were unable to hold their liquor, that might be a little more concerning. Even if I was still drinking myself, I wouldn't exactly want to witness someone getting absolutely pissed on a first date, but suggesting brunch as an acceptable date activity doesn't preclude someone from getting drunk at 11 a.m. on bottomless mimosas. And if you're enjoying the company on a date, it can be fun to get drunk with them and be a silly little goose. <laughs> It's one o'clock in the morning. This type of guy just comes across as sad and lonely because they've clearly set their standards in low earth orbit and have come up with a bunch of ultimatums about a person they have yet to meet. Guys, you gotta act with a little more nuance and empathy and maybe do some self-reflection to see that you also are not perfect and come to the realization that no one is. These are what we might call idiosyncrasies that make people unique and imperfect. Not in a negative social or cultural sense, but as natural variations in personal traits that should be celebrated, not condemned. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> Did you know 98% of men on Tinder are 5'3", unemployed, and boring? Hey, Jason, did you know shitting on 98% of other men is not attractive and boasting about your height screams of insecurity? This doesn't make you not like other guys. It actually makes you more of a statistic. And stating sarcasm as a unique personal quality is really scraping the bottom of the barrel as if no other human on the planet knows how to be sarcastic. Watch, I can do it too. I work in aviation. <laughs> okay, but... What is your job? Do you clean the toilets on the plane? Do you pull those triangle blocks from under the wheels before takeoff? Are you the plane? All aboard Jason Air, where the flight attendants explain where the exits are with so much sarcasm, you'll be unsure if there are actually emergency exits at all on the plane. Yeah, we have emergency exits, all right. Unfortunately, we do not offer complimentary warm peanuts, but we do serve complimentary nuts. I just noticed the biohazard logo on his hat. 
uh, stay away from this guy. Maybe he really isn't like other guys. He's fucking radioactive. I'm gonna show you the final example of not like other guys behavior in its entirety without comment. Yeah. I like skinny scrawny guys. How about multimillionaires? How about eight inches and thick? How about talented? How about loving and respectful? I lost my wife 10 weeks ago, 21 years faithful. My daughter committed suicide three weeks ago. Oh shit. 13, she was faster than me at 12, and I run a six minute mile. My testimony, I'm nothing but pure, and I ask you if you want to be in the YouTube channel. And you like scrawny guys. I know he trauma dump on us like that, damn. Yikes. <laughs> Talk about radioactive. This guy has to be using HGH just based on his build alone, but also on his inability to control his emotions. Dude ended up bullying himself by trauma dumping and sounded like he was gonna start crying mid rant. So what have we learned? Both men and women who are traditionally and non-traditionally masculine and or feminine take part in the logical fallacy of being not like others of the same gender. It's a futile attempt to position oneself as uniquely different but comes across as desperate and clingy from people who are socially inept or, like I said before, really lonely and probably suffering from undiagnosed depression or trauma or both. It almost feels that for men, it's a foregone conclusion that they participate in this type of performative masculinity and don't get as much flack for it despite expressing it in much more harmful and aggressive ways where women who post about being uniquely different to the rest of their gender group get a lot of shit and are mocked relentlessly for merely being cringe. Just look at the subscriber counts for the Reddit subs of not like other girls and not like other guys respectively. The disparity of roughly 930,000 members between the two could be attributed to societal norms, the prevalence of the not like other girls trope in media and culture, and underlying gender dynamics. The not like other girls trope has been a significant part of pop culture and media for some time where women or girls assert their uniqueness by distancing themselves from stereotypical interests or behaviors, whether it be traditional femininity or stereotypes within their own subculture that puts women down intentionally or not. The trope being widely discussed, satirized, and critiqued shows a bizarre fascination with the trend and thus its spread. This narrative is more visible due to the sexist societal emphasis on women's appearance and behavior, which leads to more and more content and critique. Men likely show less interest in challenging traditional masculinity and create less related content because societal expectations and narratives around masculinity differ leading to less public pushback against traditional masculine norms. This difference in scrutiny and the way gender norms are enforced and internalized contribute to the variance in the popularity and desire to analyze and critique men in the same way. There were countless examples I came across of people saying how proud they were to be essentially better than others, and it's a really depressing downward spiral, endlessly scrolling through these videos and images. In general, I think we maybe need to be a little bit more forgiving when it comes to women posting this stuff, no matter how embarrassing and sad it may be. Except for when it comes to people like Pearl Davis. She's a monster. <laughs> At the same time, these people, men, really need to do some soul searching and go to therapy maybe and understand that this type of content and mentality does absolutely nothing but harm their respective gender. And shouting about your dead daughter on a beach in front of a bunch of strangers is not a great way to gain respect or engender a sense of sympathy or attraction from the opposite sex. It's just weird <laughs> and embarrassing. <laughs> My daughter committed suicide three weeks ago. Oh shit. That's the video. Thanks so much for sticking around. And if you made it this far, that means you're special. Make sure you like and comment and share it with a friend or an enemy. <laughs> Uh, you can go follow me on Instagram, um, where I post updates about the channel, behind the scenes stuff, and just what's going on. So, uh, you know, go over there, because I think it helps an algorithm, I guess, maybe, if you, I have more followers on all the social media. Once again, I appreciate you guys for watching and sticking around, and all the words of encouragement, and all the comments and things. Uh, it really means a lot. Uh, so... Um, I just dissociated there for a second. <laughs> Until next time, adios, sayonara, and vanish. Get out of here. I gotta go do laundry. <laughs>